Fox Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. Pleased to have with us three-term Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego, Democrat representing District 7. Great to see you, by the way. Good to see Here you. it is. Um, let's run it down for you. It's kind of Glendale stretching to Avondale, south, downtown Phoenix, southern, western, downtown Phoenix, portions of Glendale, yep. Tolleson, Guadalupe. Yep. Good to see you. Good to see you, John. How you been? Very good. Busy. Busy. <laughs> All right. Since we last talked, you're not going to run for U.S. Senate. Not going to run for U.S. Senate. Tell me why not. And Mark Kelly will be apparently the guy for the Democrats running against Martha McSally. Tell me why you decided not to go. Well, look, it was a, a painful decision, but at the end of the day, I thought it was best for the Democratic Party and for me. Uh, we did everything leading up to actually run. And we did our research, and it was going to be a bloody primary. That was the only way one of us would come out of this, whether it be him or I. Uh, and, you know, that's not in the best interest of uh, the Democratic Party. It's certainly not in the best interest of Arizona for us to have that, because we need to have, uh, you know, uh, I think Kelly uh, be the, the U.S. Senator for this did area. Did anybody from the party say, Ruben, not now? No, I think they've learned their lesson because they've tried to do that many times before and that's never worked. Uh, so I've always kind of been my own person and I don't like getting pressured. I actually probably would have the opposite effect. So uh, when you say bloody, what what would have been uh, on the continuum? You would have been left of Mark Kelly? You it, no, it actually had nothing to do with I mean, that was the worst. It was not going to be a battle of ideas. It would have been a battle of personalities. And I couldn't, you know, win just talking about, you know, my better ideas. And I just don't want to engage in a. 15 month bloody primary and try to beat up somebody instead of trying to encourage you have to do that you have to bring that's their what, positives know, down yeah, so exactly. this means go negative correct and that's that's what the the polling showed and i'm just not willing to do it uh, just not my nature and um you know there's a lot of things i'm willing to do but you know doing a 15 month primary where i'm being negative against someone that i respect that consider a friend uh and then at the same time i'm giving time up with my family uh, you know, and it just didn't make sense in the end. But you've left the door open for 2022, a Senate run, because again, this is we're in such a weird cycle because of John McCain's death at the time it came within yep. his term. This next this next election will only be a two year deal. And then yeah. the well, full six year yeah. term. Yeah, hopefully there is no option. You know, and I think Mark Kelly is going to win this. I don't think I'm going to have that option, but I'm always going to, you know, look out how I could best help uh, Arizona. And if that happens to be a race later, then we'll look at it then. You are part of the progressive caucus of the Democrat Party. What have you learned in there in your three terms so far? What what have you taken away and said, this is what I've learned being back there? Well, I think the one thing the Progressive Caucus really uh, has been strong in, and I think it, it finally resonated with the rest of, of America, we were the first caucus that really started calling out the corruption that's occurred within politics and the body politics. Uh, you know, and I think if you see where, where the caucus is pushing, uh, the rest of the caucus, we're trying to answer the, the ailments of this country, you know, when it comes to health care, when it comes to low wages, when it comes to, you know, the tax evasion that continually is occurring by these big corporations. This is the caucus that's been kind of railing and uh, bringing up, uh, ringing the alarm. And now you actually see both Democrats and even Republicans are also saying the same thing. So uh, I've been very proud to be part of that organization. I think they're really leading the, the way on a lot of uh, issues that are now considered more mainstream. I was kind of stunned to hear that you have become the national campaign chairman for Representative Eric Swalwell, Democrat from Swalwell. California. See, I'm a good chairman. I got to I got to correct Swalwell. you on that. <laughs> Swalwell. Yeah, he's from up my way. I grew up in the Bay Area. He's an Alameda County guy yeah, up Dublin, near Oakland. Yeah. yeah. Um, why him? Well, you, look, we're, first of all, we're best of friends. Uh, we actually babysit each other's kids. Uh, not that that's the only reason, but, you know, but I, I you think know he him. wants someone. You yeah, know his heart. I know his heart, and he also wants somebody, I think, in his camp that's going to look out for him and also keep him honest because these campaigns can be very difficult. But also in terms of personal resume, he's been in Congress now for eight years. He's been on the Intel Committee. He's, been, he's a former prosecutor. He's the best retail politician you're going to see out there. He's originally from Iowa. And I think he's got the combination of a lot of the candidates that are currently running, uh, the talents of a lot of the accomplishments that are currently running, but it's all in one person. And I think that's what, really what about the fact that, um, that he's a white guy? Uh, the party talks about diversity. What well, you know, and of course, you know, I think the most important thing besides actually having someone diverse is that they understand and appreciate diversity. Uh, and I think we have a lot of great diverse uh, candidates. And of course, for some reason, Eric doesn't make it. We're always going to back whoever is the most likely person to win it. You know, I, when you come on the program, I like to mention it's important that you were, you were a Marine. You served in Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, served in the combat unit, Lima. Um, he is very strong on gun control. 
he would like a strong gun buyback program right. and an assault weapon ban. Right. Do you believe that that would stop the carnage in this country? I certainly believe it will stop the carnage what happens to our mass shootings. I think there, there has to also be follow-up work when it comes to um, you know, gun violence that occurs every day with gang members, and that happens through universal background checks uh, and stronger prosecutions of you know, gun runners. You and think laws can stop this stuff? Certainly has. As a matter of fact, if you actually look at what happened uh, under the uh, uh, Bradley uh, assault ban, you actually had a, a diminished amount of mass shootings. As soon as we actually got rid of the assault weapons ban, we actually had ma more mass shootings using uh, a lot of these assault weapons uh, that you're seeing right now. Let me ask you about immigration. Um, we have got, we're gonna show the caravan, and I've talked to several of you guys in mm -hmm. the last few weeks. We talked to Martha McSally, talked to Tom O'Halloran. This stuff just doesn't make sense, I think, to anyone watching it. I mean, this seems to, just a reasonable person, like orchestrated chaos. What, what is going on here, and why can't Congress fix this? Tom O'Halloran sat here and said, if we wanted to, we could fix it very quickly. But he said both parties don't want a resolution because it's a great campaign issue. Do you buy that? No, that's total BS. Uh, you don't need actually Congress to actually fix this right now. You actually can do this almost all through the administrative process, and you can get it done tomorrow. Uh, so, which administration are we talking about? The president? Oh, you know, the president. Yeah. Um, look, what he needs to do is just hire more immigration officers, bring them down to the border, uh, process. Can these he people. do that by executive order? Yes, he can. Yeah. He could transfer the money instead of focusing on, on a border wall, which isn't actually helping stop this. He could transfer that money and put it into that to actually go ahead and hire these judges process the, the, the immigration of these uh, people faster uh, and so that way we could figure out who actually belongs here and who doesn't. Also, he can also open up the immigrant, sorry, the refugee application process, asylum process, and allow them to actually do it in their home country um, or in other countries. And how, I think that would help stop this big flow that's happening. Here. How many are legitimate asylum claims, do you believe? What percentage? You know, it's hard to tell because... It, it we hear 10%. Yeah, I don't, think that's, I don't think that's accurate. I think the most important thing is there's a reason why you have due process because you, you can't really just base it on numbers. But you have some very good, well-trained immigration, immigration judges and uh, counselors, uh, case managers, that could actually help us determine who really deserves to be here versus who does not. Do you believe it's a crisis? I do believe it's a crisis. It's a humanitarian crisis, but it's something that we have created, um, this administration created. This is something that we could, you know, happens almost every year, uh, and there's ways to actually manage it instead of a, let it to get to this crisis point that you see right now. The idea that I even if you were to process these people through judges, the Republicans argue the minute that they're in, they end up in the interior, they vanish, they don't go to their court date. I know you have a different take on that. You say most do. Yeah, statistically speaking, most do. As a matter of fact, if you actually use the Obama program, they had about 99% compliance. Is that for the first time when they go for to the court? For the second time, too, because they were actually talking to them the whole time to, to get them ready to go to uh, their second uh, asylum hearing. Does our border wall barrier, which is not a contiguous uh, deal anyway across the border, does it help slow down some of this? It doesn't seem to be, like from what we're seeing, people are actually going to the border, climbing it, and then just jumping on the side and waiting for, you know, Border Patrol to show up and, and, and turn themselves in. If you actually wanted to, again, deal with this faster, um, and in a manner actually that's more, you know, sane if you can even say that, you have people coming, uh, have them come to the port of entry, instead of trying to force them in between ports of entry, this is what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. uh, have them quickly meet with the judge, so the judge can actually winnow down who's supposed to be or who's not have them meet up with the case manager, and the case manager basically assures that they're going to make it all the way through to the, uh, the final process. And then at that point, you could probably be able to determine who's in this country and who should not be in this country within a matter of months uh, instead of this process the president is doing. The president actually is doing right now is, you know, if President Obama had allowed this to go uh, as mismanaged as it is right now, Republicans would be losing their mind. Instead, they're coming up with excuses. In January, the Patriot Movement, Arizona, posted photos and videos of your home on social media, protesting outside your property, saying Gallego can decide who can come inside his property. 
but Americans can't decide who comes into our country. Right. Well, we can, but yes. Yeah, you, you felt threatened by this. Well, you know, anytime someone shows you, you my front door, my address, um, you know, and this is a movement that is not, you know, very rational. Uh, they've been listed by a couple people uh, as potentially violent. Uh, I've gotten warnings from police officers, everything else like they that. They took it down. Uh, they took it down, but, you know, nothing ever really gets taken down in, uh, uh, in social media. What about the point they're making in that? And Nancy Pelosi gets the same line. Well, I also think that, first of all, they're, they're wrong in the sense that we do have a right to say who comes in this country. But they're basically using the language of fear to, to somehow make it seem that both Democrats and even some Republicans just want anybody to come to this country. I think we have a right to actually say who comes to this country. I think we should have border patrol and we should have judges that can actually help us adjudicate this in a manner that makes sense. Just because I think we should have conference immigration reform does not mean that I'm for open borders. It's just a way for them to distract from everybody. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the Mueller report, um, how your comfort level with uh, Attorney General Barr and his handling of this and whether the Democrat Party is moving further to the left. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who you know. Uh, we're back in a minute with three-term Arizona Congressman Democrat Ruben Gallego, representing District 7 in Arizona, back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Back on Newsmaker Saturday, I, I wanted to say Sunday, but I caught myself. Three-term Arizona Congressman Democrat Ruben Gallego is our guest on Newsmaker Saturday. Let's talk about what's going on with the the Mueller probe, which sure. is over. Do you believe that there's anything actionable still heading oh, down a road of impeachment? There's certainly, Even though the, the, the rough finding has been no collusion, no obstruction, at least from Attorney General Barr's perspective. Well, I think the most important thing to remember, this is from Attorney General Barr's perspective. We need to have the full report come out, which it will tomorrow. I think it's inappropriate that our Attorney General Barr is actually having a press conference trying to frame the report. You know, he should just release the report. Do you trust him? Uh, absolutely not. No. This is the same man. This is a guy who had a pretty good pedigree and a pretty good career that seemed to be liked by both Democrats and Republicans. He got confirmed. Uh, yeah, and, and the Democrats that voted for him were wrong to, to vote for him, too. This is the same man that cleared everybody in the Iran Contra affair. Um, so, I, you know, I don't trust him uh, at all. I think I, tr I trust Mueller. And that's why we should get the report. The report, you do says, trust the report says there's nothing there, and then there's nothing there. But um, I'm not going to trust the interpretation of anybody. Uh, we're, we were looking at a video of the president. The president's threat to move Central Americans or anybody coming into the country illegally in mass to sanctuary cities, mm -hmm. sanctuary states. What do you think of that? Well, I think it's a waste of money. Um, it's not really going to affect the sanctuary states. Uh, if anything, it's just... Could it move the needle politically, possibly? No, not at Cause all. Cause anybody to say, okay, we need to take this up now. No. So, it, I mean, if anything, it's just more to make himself feel better. And it's just, it's a waste of money. Because if you're going to transfer these uh, men and women, you're going to have to put them in a bus. You're going to have to put a guard on there. And then you're going to take them to, let's say, Los Angeles or San Francisco. That's a very expensive endeavor. Instead, what you should do is spend the money to actually bring judges down decide who really has a refugee claim, who doesn't, send those that, that don't have a legitimate refugee claim, send them back, uh, and then you know, get through the process faster. Could uh, we possibly hire enough judges to handle this kind of influx? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. This is, not, this is not something that we can't handle as a country. We can absolutely handle this. We've handled a lot more in the past. Um, do you feel that it's not fair that the border states share an, a disproportionate burden of this, of this whole thing? Well, you know, Border states are actually doing this, should be getting more money from the federal government. They should be getting more money um, and more investment, whether it's you know, from FEMA or from any type of DHS, to help with the, the influx and the burden. Uh, and so if you want to move you know, masses of people around to help you know, uh, alleviate the, the population or alleviate the pressure the, at the border, that's one thing. Um, but doing it to, to make a point and send them all the way to like Seattle uh, it's just a waste of money and doesn't actually do anything in the end. How concerned are you with the national debt right now, which is over $22 trillion? I would say um, my biggest concern is, you know, down the road about where we're going to be able to do investments. But this is why we should never have the tax cut last year. The tax cut last year was supposed to be paying for itself, uh, and it hasn't. And that's why we're actually in this problem. Well, let me ask you about that, because 
the proponents of the tax cut will say the tax cut generated more revenue. The problem is Congress can't rein in spending, that we have a spending problem, not a tax problem. Well, no, we have a priorities problem. The Republican Party knew that this is the amount of spending that was going to be happening for the next couple of years. Why not cut it back? Well, when they actually passed their tax bill, they said that it was, we were going to produce more than 3% uh, GDP growth per, per year. We didn't hit that. So now that's why we're actually in this situation. So the reason we can't cut it back is also because the Republicans want a, uh, a problem, but not a solution. The problem well, we are is getting record, record revenues from that tax cut. Record revenues. Record revenues that are stripping the, the costs such as Social Security and Medicare. Um, look, they saw this. They knew it. They just lied. You know, we told them this wasn't going to happen. The Congressional Budget Office said it was never going to happen. We said there was going to be a deficit. You don't think that tax cut was a good idea? No, if you are worried about the deficit, that tax cut was not a good idea. There are ways to do tax cuts, actually, How that could have been How about putting just money in people's pockets? Do you think it was a good idea? I think putting money in people's pockets is a good idea. I think putting money in people's pockets that don't need it is a bad idea. If you wanted to do this, I was going to say, you should do the tax cut to the middle class that actually generates more tax revenue, not to the top ten. Even to the corporations, you know, these corporations, what did they end up doing? They gave a one-time bonus but spent almost more, close to a trillion dollars in, in stock buybacks. That doesn't actually help the economy at all. Who is running the Democrat Party right now? Um, Nancy Pelosi is the speaker. Mm -hmm. Your feelings about her and her leadership? You know, and I've been back and forth. I've supported her in the past and haven't supported her in the past. Did I think you want her to be speaker again? This time, yes, I did. Uh, last year, I did not support her. Or last term, I did not. Uh, look, I think she's running the Democratic Party right now. I think the Democratic Party, though, has always been very much, um, you know, separated into many different silos. We're not one unified party. We never have been. Uh, kind of like the Republicans. Well, the Republicans, I think, have, uh, you know, are a little more unified because they're you know, they're basically the same, you know, base of people. For us, we come from a lot of different people trying to get into, fit into one ideology. Let me ask you about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She gets a lot of, a lot of press. Yep. A lot of heat from the right. Do you know her? Do you know her well? I just beat her at trivia, actually. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Was this in a bar in D.C.? No, no, what? it was like our, our, our retreat. And uh, we had a caucus retreat with all the Democrats to go over our issues and what we're going to focus on this year. And she How was, smart is she? She's really smart. She is really, really smart. How likable is she? she? I mean, I get along well with her. I consider her a friend. Uh, we may not agree 100% on everything, but I think she's a really likable person. Too much, too fast? No, I think that's really mean to say to anybody. Paul Ryan was a, a member of Congress at the age of 29. Uh, and, you know, if you talk to him, you know, I didn't think he was very bright. Uh, et cetera, uh, uh, AOC is actually much brighter than Paul Ryan. So you don't feel that she's come in and not kind of paid her dues and tried to learn the ropes and all this. She's, she's a firebrand right from the get-go. Yeah, I think they say that a lot about you know, young women that are being aggressive. You know, I, I remember when I first got to Congress at 34, I feel old now, um, to, compared to her, uh, people were saying the same thing, like you're coming in too hot, you gotta wait, you gotta wait your turn, or all this kind of stuff. You know, if, if you have the talent, then, then go and, mm -hmm. and fight. Uh, and you know, it, politics is a battle of ideas, and if hers is winning, it's because everyone else is weaker. What is left to do for you? How many terms would you want to serve? Well, it's not an issue of terms, it's an issue of like, what, I, what I can do for What's uh, on your radar about. right now that you really want to get accomplished? We, you know, Medicare, uh, fixing, uh, uh, having more access to Medicare like in terms of Medicare for all, um, doing more work when Universal health care. Universal health care of some manner. We don't have to, I'm not stuck to the idea that it has to Are be. Are you okay that people will lose, you know, we've got great benefits here at Fox. We would have to go on a government plan. There'll be a lot of people around here, I'm sure, not very happy about That's that. That's what I'm saying. And I'm not stuck to the idea that we have to only have, you know, one, one uh, avenue to this. I think the most important thing is to make sure that we're bringing down the overall cost of health care and we have universality when it comes to it, which means if you're, as long as you're covered under something uh, that is adequate, I don't necessarily believe it has to be a government program. Uh, but there should always at least be a government program that someone could buy into also. Good to see you, yeah, Congressman. You. Great to see you, to see you and uh, open door anytime. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. Arizona Congressman Ruben Gallego.